Welcome back friends to Top 10 Gaming, I'm your host Johnny Rogers. Before we get started, hit that thumbs up button if you love the Pokemon series and let us know down in the comments which Pokemon games have been your favorite from the past. With that, let's get to today's list of the top 10 biggest tips and tricks for Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. In at number 10, Teamwork. <gasps> Holy crap! My dudes! I'm cheating! Come, where is she? Let's go, let's go. See, I can play as the girl. That video shows Tyranitar Tube exposing one of the first tricks you can access immediately. It allows you to significantly lower the difficulty of the game by letting the gamer use both trainers. It also increases your odds of capturing Pokemon as displayed here. I have no friends. Okay, yes, yes, I am that good. I am the best. In order to activate this trick with your single Joy-Con, shake the other controller while the small two-player green icon comes up in the corner. That will give you a second Pokemon for battle and or a second player to make catching Pokemon that much easier. In at number nine, Pokemon Go Hack. As some of you may know, the new Pokemon Let's Go game allows people to bring over the Pokemon that they've captured in the popular mobile game, Pokemon Go. Now, be warned, this little trick may get you banned, so proceed with caution. For iOS users, you'll have to download an app called App Valley and for Android, you'll have to download an APK called Pokemon Go Plus Plus. The iOS version will be called iSpoof for Pokemon Go, with the other one being kind of the same. You can use that app to change your location to anywhere in the world, which will allow you to capture Pokemon from basically anywhere. Now, to not get banned, you'll need to leave the location in the area you've chosen for several hours, like six to eight hours. This will trick the system into believing you're actually there. And under your settings for the Pokemon Go app, make sure that you're connected to the same Wi-Fi as your Nintendo Switch. Then, once you're in game, travel to a Poke Park or a Park Go. There you can transfer every Pokemon you've captured from the Pokemon Go to the Nintendo Switch. Number eight, level up faster. This tip takes a bit of grinding, but it'll be worth it. You don't wanna just catch Pokemon. You wanna catch as many of them as possible. The act of catching Pokemon levels you up, gives you experience, and gives you candy. Mmm, candy. Much like in Pokemon Go, you can transfer newly caught Pokemon to Professor Oak, and in return, he will give you candy. You can then use that candy to power up Pokemon you have in your party, and it also boosts their abilities to level them up faster. Number seven, stock up. If you remember in other Pokemon games, you would mainly hit up the Pokemon Center to heal your team, and then to the Mart to get potions or antidotes for your next battle. Because this game works like Pokemon Go, there isn't actually battles that ensue when you encounter wild Pokemon. So the big tip here is to always stock up on Pokeballs when first arriving to a new town. You're going to use those much, much more than anything else in the game. Also, like I mentioned before, you can unlock various helpful parts of the game by collecting a certain amount of Pokemon, unique or not, it doesn't really matter. Just catch as many as possible. Number six, win big. This next tip is for all you gamblers out there in Caledon City. Every slot machine will have different odds that change every time. However, to hit the big time, you'll have to play the machine four times. And if you win twice, or more, then just stay put because chances are it'll keep paying out. In at number five, toxic attacks. If you happen to be in combat and encounter a toxic attack, this trick will help you make it through. Normally, if you leave the infected Pokemon in battle, it will continue to take more severe damage. If you, however, swap them out and then bring them back into battle, the toxic effect should decrease, making things a little bit easier for you. Number four, catch combos. This new catch combo system can help you out a ton and unlock some pretty cool stuff. The way a catch combo works is by catching the same Pokemon several times in a given area. However, if you leave the area, flee, run out of Pokeballs, or an in-game action distracts you, this will break the combo. When you get catch combos, it increases your odds of running into rare Pokemon, which helps a lot considering you usually only have a 1% chance of seeing them. It also assists greatly to catching Pokemon with greater individual values. The more Pokemon in the combo, the higher the max IV will be. This catch combo tip also increases your chances of running into a shiny Pokemon, which would include some potential legendary characters. Number three, the judge function. In order to see your individual values more clearly for each Pokemon, you'll have to first collect 30 different species. Once they're in your Pokedex, head to the building that connects Route 11 to Route 12, and upstairs you'll find one of Professor Oak's assistants. There he will give you the judge function in your Pokemon box. That will allow you to see all of the base stats for your Pokemon. And at number two, talk to everyone. Make sure that you talk to every NPC that you come across in the game because it can prove invaluable. While some may just spew nonsense, others will give you more tips, items, and even Pokemon. Especially the man sitting on the bench in Vermilion City who will give you the Pokemon that are 
exclusive to other versions of the game. There are also certain NPCs that if you meet their specific requirements will gift you with the three original starters from the old Pokemon games. Now you can catch them in the wild but it's to your benefit to get them from the NPCs because they'll have much better stats. Lastly at our number one spot, trust your Pokemon. As I mentioned before you'll want to stock up on as many Pokeballs as you possibly can but after a while that can run up a big bill and you can't just sit at the casino all day. You can trade certain items in the mart to get money but the most important tip is to watch your Pokemon's tail. When you're in the wild your Pikachu or your Eevee will start to wag their tail when there's a rare item nearby. Think of their tail as a metal detector for rare and valuable items. If you can't seem to find enough of those there are some alternatives. You can get items from NPCs at least once per day to sell or you can go to a woman in the northwest corner of Pewter City who will give you a valuable pearl if you just watch her slowpoke for a while. And when you're in the warden's house in Fuchsia City use the strong push on the block to obtain a nugget from the diglet in the wall. All that should give you some sweet cash. And that has been the top 10 biggest tips and tricks for Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. Thank you so much for watching and if you enjoyed this video hit that thumbs up button and if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe before you leave. Plus let us know down in the comments if you have any other helpful tips or tricks for your fellow trainers. And if you want more videos like this one all you have to do is click the playlist on the screen. From Top 10 Gaming I'm Johnny Rogers and until next time take care.